Hi everyone, we are group F5 and I am Pratiksha Gaikwar. Today we are going to present topic cash memory. In upcoming video, following content will be explained by me and my group members. What is cash memory? How it works? Types of cash memory? Cash mapping? Types of cash mapping? Advantages and disadvantages of cash memory? So let's begin with what is cash memory. Cache memory is very high speed memory. It facilitates the transfer of data between the processor and the main memory at the speed which matches to the speed of processor. The cache is smaller and fast memory that stores copies of the data from frequently used main memory location. Let's see one example for better understanding. If you open and then close Microsoft World and then you open it again after a while, it will now take less time to open because it was retrieved from cache memory. Hello, Ashna this side and I'll be explaining how cache memory actually works. The cache controller handles data request and manages data flow between the cache and the processor as well as the cache and main memory. To get the most out of its performance, the CPU must access ultra-fast memory. When the CPU needs to access data, it first looks into the cache memory. If the data is found in cache memory, it is referred to as cache hit and if data is not found, it is called as cache miss. As the data is not found in cache memory, it is accessed from the main memory and a copy of the data is also copied into the cache memory so that the next time a data request for the same data comes in, it will be available in cache memory. The performance of cache memory is frequently measured in terms of a quantity called heat ratio which is equal to the number of hits divided by number of hits plus number of miss or number of hits divided by total access. Hello, myself Pawan Raja Gaikwad and I am here to tell you about the levels of cache. There are mainly three levels of cache, L1, L2 and L3, which are categorized based on their speed and capacity. The primary memory in the CPU or processor is level 1 or L1 cache. As the L1 memory is situated in the processor, it operates at the same speed as the processor. It is the fastest cache on the laptop or computer. If a CPU has four cores, then each core will have its separate L1 cache. Usually, the size of L1 ranges from 16 KB to 64 KB. Next, level 2 or L2 cache. It may be present inside or outside of the CPU. In terms of speed, they are slower than the L1 cache. All cores have their own L2 cache or they can share one L2 cache among themselves. The memory size of this cache is in the range of 128 KB to 8 MB. Earlier, L2 cache designs placed them on the motherboard which made them quite slower. Including L2 caches in microprocessor designs are very common. In modern CPUs, even though they may not be fast as the L1 cache, but since it's outside of the core, the capacity can be increased and is still faster than the main memory. Level 2 cache is also called the secondary cache or an external cache. Next, level 3 or L3 cache. It is the slowest cache and greatest in size as compared to other cache memories. It is located outside the CPU and it's shared by all the cores of CPU. This cache is not present in all the processors. Some high-end processors may have this type of cache. Level 3 cache is used to improve the performance of level 1 and level 2 cache. Its memory size ranges from 1 MB to 8 MB. Now let us see the different techniques used for mapping. There are three different techniques of mapping used for the purpose of cache memory, which are direct mapping, associative mapping and set associative mapping. Direct mapping. This is the simplest technique which maps each main memory block to only one possible cache line. It is the simplest type of cache memory mapping. Here only tag field is required to match while searching word. That is why it is the fastest cache. It is less expensive compared to associative cache mapping. The disadvantage of this type of mapping is that it has fixed location for a specific block. If a program acquires two blocks, that map to the same line repeatedly, cache misses are very high. Associative mapping. Associative mapping stores both the address and the data of a memory word. Any block can go into any line of the cache. This mapping is fast. It is easy to implement and flexible mapping form. Disadvantage of this type of mapping is that implementing associative mapping in cache memory is costly because addresses must be stored with data. Now let's discuss about set associative mapping. 
set associative mapping allows two or more words to have the same index address. In this cache memory, the limitations and the downsides of the direct mapping are resolved by making some adjustments to the direct mapping algorithm. Set associative cache mapping eliminates the need to thrash or erase the occupied block as a prevalent in the direct mapping approach. The algorithm works by mapping the multiple lines together in a set instead of mapping each line one by one. Then the entire memory block can be mapped to any of the cache lines of a specific set. It is basically a combination of direct and associative mapping technique and serves the best of two. Now let's discuss about advantages and disadvantages of associative mapping. The set associative mapping cache memory has the highest heat ratio compared to the direct and associative cache memory discussed above. Thus its performance is considered better. Now let's discuss about disadvantages of set associative mapping. Set associative cache memory is very expensive. As the set size increases, the cost increases. Now let's discuss the advantages of the cache memory. Cache memory is much faster than primary memory and secondary memory. Second, it keeps all the data and instructions that the CPU commonly uses, thus increasing the performance of the CPU. Third one is, it store, it consumes less access time as compared to primary memory. And fourth one is, it stores the data, instructions and information for a limited period. The next one is, disadvantages of cache memory. This memory is more expensive than other memories like primary memory and secondary memory. The cost of the cache memory increases the price of the computer system. Second one is it has a limited capacity. And third is if the computer is turned off, the data stored in a cache memory is not so, so it gets destroyed.